It will go down as one of the most shocking crime stories of all time. Prison employee Joyce Mitchell helping two convicts escape from a New York maximum security prison. Mitchell's case, though, puts a spotlight on a much bigger problem going on inside our prisons. In Michigan, a female deputy is now sitting in a jail cell after an improper relationship with an inmate. I flew to Detroit and went behind bars to get the Crime Watch Daily exclusive. Gemma Cowperthwaite's life has been flipped upside down. Not too long ago, she was on the other side of these bars as a correctional officer. I got caught up in something that I shouldn't have. Now, this prison guard turned prisoner is sitting down to talk exclusively with Crime Watch Daily. Hi, Gemma. Hi. How are you? Good. I went inside the Wayne County Jail where she's locked up for five months for sexually assaulting one of the very inmates she was hired to guard. Gemma, it must be difficult for you now sitting there on the other side of the law. Yes, very. Gemma was a model officer at the St Clair County Sheriff's Office until one day a young prisoner caught her eye. I met my uh, quote unquote victim uh, back last year. Gemma's part of an alarming and dangerous epidemic. In New York, Joyce Mitchell, the prison seamstress, hid hacksaws in frozen hamburger patties to help her lover, convicted killer Richard Matt and inmate David Sweat, break out of prison. In Hawaii, the guy running away from our affiliate KGMB's camera is Richard Seaman, a federal corrections officer. He was busted for having sex with a female inmate in the commissary. But Richard couldn't run away from his own DNA. His accuser pulled a Monica Lewinsky and saved it on her prison uniform. And in Brooklyn, Officer Nancy Gonzalez got knocked up in lockup, sleeping with convicted cop killer Ronald Wilson, who's now a baby daddy on death row. I would like to say it was rare, but it's a little more common than uh, I, would, uh, I would like to see it. Wayne County Sheriff Benny Napoleon oversees the jail Gemma now calls home. He tells us he's had to fire a staggering 13 correctional officers from his facility in Indiana, all for having inappropriate relationships with inmates. You have to understand that they have everything to gain by having that relationship with you, and you have everything to lose. And if you keep that in the forefront of your mind, then you'll understand that this is not a personal relationship, it's an absolute professional relationship and a line that you absolutely cannot cross. What was it that made you fall for her? She took a liking to me. She'd asked me if I could talk to her outside of the facility when she got out, and I told her that no, not really. But that all changed when Gemma's victim was granted a daily work pass. So I gave her my phone number and said, you know, if you want to contact me, if you want to talk outside of here, then I'm okay with that. But you knew, of course, at the time that that was a breach of, breach of conduct. Right, exactly. There was never a time that I sat and told her, if you don't do this, I'm going to do this. Do you accept that in some small way, that perhaps there was an abuse of power? In a small way, yeah. Um, not to the extent that they're claiming, no. Relationships between inmates and, and, and deputy sheriffs, uh, corrections officers, is your cardinal rule number one. Sheriff Timothy Patrick Donnellan, the man who first hired Gemma, says any relationship between an officer and an inmate, even if consensual, is an extreme abuse of power. Inmates cannot consent in any form or manner to have relations with guards, deputy sheriffs, corrections officers, anyone in those power and authority positions. They have a tremendous amount of power over these inmates, and if they were allowed to consent, we'd have total chaos. Once out on work furlough, Gemma says her victim started calling and asking for favours. I was trying to do, in my mind, what I thought was the right thing on a personal level, um, obviously not on a professional level. So I drove her to work and she asked if she could use my house um, to shower on her lunch break so she didn't have to shower in jail, um, to which I agreed to. You talk about doing it out of a place of kindness. The flip side, of course, and the view in the eyes of the law is that this was an extreme abuse of power. Right minus the fact that what the illegal part of this whole thing 
would be the sexual side to it, and there was not a sexual side to it. Gemma took a plea deal to avoid a lengthy prison sentence. Why would you accept a plea deal if you didn't actually do the crime? Because I couldn't handle uh, two to four years solitary confinement in, in prison. I mean, this sentence uh, was 10 months. I didn't think I could convince 12 random strangers that this didn't happen. In sentencing, the judge said to you that you betrayed the trust of the sheriff, the court, the judges, and of course your victim as well. What do you say to that? I take full responsibility for crossing the professional to the personal line, absolutely. Um, I have no problems admitting my fault in that. Um, I do have a problem saying that I betrayed the trust of my victim, um, only because she was the one to reach out to me, she was the one to come to me, she was the one to ask me for help. Did you love her? There was a strong bond between us. Um, however, I came to learn very quickly that it was completely fake. That's right, Gemma believes this was all the work of a manipulative convict who was never looking for love, only favours. You don't believe truly that, that, that she's a victim of your crime? No, I don't at all. I don't. Um, she manipulated me in so many ways. Uh, and I'm sitting here today because of that manipulation. I do not believe Gemma was manipulated by this inmate at all, no. We may not be able to reveal the victim's name, but we can tell you the 22-year-old is a repeat offender with a long rap sheet, including nine felony convictions, all revolving around fraud. And then if you believe your story, she went on to become a fraud in a relationship sense. Absolutely. Fraud for life, huh? Absolutely. Sheriff Benny Napoleon says Gemma fell for the oldest con in the book. What I try to stress to the, to the folks that work here is these people are prisoners. They are con men and women. Gemma is paying the price for crossing that line and hopes other guards resist the temptation to hook up in the lockup. Would you have, having been through a message for anyone who's in a similar situation? Yeah, run away. It's not worth it. It's not worth sitting five months in prison and having to walk into a police station as a former law enforcement officer and say, hey, I have to register as a sex offender.